So I'm going to let you know right now, you guys are all guinea pigs today because I've never used Prezi before, and I don't know if any of you have heard of it, but it's uh, similar to PowerPoint, but it's really interactive. And I wanted to try it, so if it makes anyone like motion sickness or you know anyone starts getting nauseous because it moves around a lot, um, I apologize in advance, but it should be really cool. So thank you for you know in advance for being my guinea pigs here. But um, today my topic is uh, the original functional training workout. And what I mean by original is you know back in the day before we had equipment and things to you know heavy weights to push around and whatnot, people were using things like sledgehammers and they were chopping wood and they were doing things that were you know most of us would would constitute that as physical labor. Who wants to do physical labor? Not any of us, right? Well, okay, I see some hands, good, that's good news. All right, you know, I do my gardening and things like that, that's kind of physical labor. Um, but uh, I also went to a conference years and years ago, and this was back in, uh, I wanna say 2006. And this conference was all about using unusual training implements to, to get fit and, and to have a fun workout. And at the time, this guy, Larry Giustanis, who's a, a Canadian, and he runs a place up in Canada called uh, SST, and he focuses on really training using unusual implements for a, a variety of, of athletes. So your younger kids, your NFL you know, quarterbacks, I mean, all sorts of different people, uh, people coming back from therapy and post rehab. And so he, he attacks it as you know, something that's new and fun. And a lot of us have never trained like that before. And so when I saw him talk, he was telling us about car pushing. And I'm thinking, this guy's crazy. Who wants to push a car, you know? But, you know, it kind of got the wheels turning and, and everyone, we, we all did a demo. So we were pushing plates across the floor. And people were, we're in a hotel, by the way. So we're pushing plates across, you know, the floor of this hotel and people are walking by and like, you know, looking like, what is going on? But at the time, you know, we're all thinking, okay, yeah, this is fun and crazy and cool, but we'll probably never do it again. Well. That was wrong because two weeks later I thought, you know what, I'm just going to try it with my clients. So I got this plate out, I'm pushing it down the, the rec center floor and all these people are walking by going, what is she doing? You know, I'm like, I'm, you know, the trainer with the shirt on and they're thinking, does she know what she's doing? So, um, but it, it killed my clients and, and not killed them in a bad way, but I mean, they were, you know, tired and they were, you know, having fun and it was something new. They weren't on the leg press machine, just, you know, pressing away. So um, it's fun and it, it's something that I feel like people should know about because you shouldn't just limit yourself in terms of your workout to the gym or you shouldn't just run. I mean, there's lots and lots of other things to do. And so I'm gonna throw in my little plug right now just because I can, but I also teach uh, the Art Cross Fitness class, which is new this quarter. And this is all the stuff that we do out there. So if you guys are interested, you can stop by on Mondays, Wednesdays, and Thursdays, check it out. We're flipping tires, we're doing sledgehammer hits, it's a lot of fun. So um, we'll get started. Hopefully this works. All right. So what we're really talking about when we're talking, you know, about using things like tires and sledgehammers and sleds and pushing things around that are really, really heavy, what we're talking about really is functionality. So functionality meaning if we look at the definition, so we want to do movement patterns and exercises that you know are going to make us better. We'll perform better. We'll be able to lift heavier things. We'll be able be, be able to move our bodies in a, a better and more efficient way. Um, also, it prevents injury. So if uh, you know a lot of people have thrown their back out lifting a box, you know how many of us have injured ourselves doing something simple or bending down to tie our shoe? I mean, we need to be training things that mimic those motions that typically people tend to get injured doing. So uh, functional training really attacks this one of the best ways. I mean, it's better than just hopping on a treadmill and walking. You're getting fit, no doubt. You're getting your cardiovascular fitness, which is immensely important, but you also need to be doing something to strengthen your body and to, to promote those functional movements that we do on a day-to-day -day basis. So uh, we have population-specific functional training. So obviously, I wouldn't do the same workout or the same type of, uh, I wouldn't use the same training implements for my law enforcement officer than I would for the post rehab patient. So obviously things are going to be a, a little bit different. I might scale them differently. Um, I might use the same implement, so maybe I'll use a tire in both instances, but I might change it a little bit. So with any implement, you can change the, the scaling of it, you can change how heavy it is, you can change what movement they're doing. 
So there's a lot of um, differences, but there's also a lot of similarities between these populations. Uh, and you see children on there too. The most fun I ever had probably was uh, training this eight-year-old girl, and her mom brought her in. She wanted her to get more fit. And I'm thinking, what do I do with an eight-year-old? I can't just plop her on a lap pull-down machine and say, do eight reps. I mean, she's going to be <laughs> bored out of her mind, right? And so I did obstacle courses, and I did, you know, fun things with the plates that, you know, normally you put the plates on the machine. Well, I had her doing rotational stuff. That was, it was more fun, and it was engaging. And so, you know, thinking about all of these different populations, you can do unusual training implements with all of these people. So we've got personal reasons for doing, for engaging in functional training. We've got physiological reasons, and we've got movement-related reasons. So I'll go into each of those. So first off, we've got performance. Most people, um, you know, if they're training for an event, they're training for a competition of some sort, uh, they need to be better, they need to be stronger, they need to be faster. Um, we could be training for fitness, just someone who wants to improve their overall fitness. Uh, you know, maybe they're feeling a little tired and weak and they want to get stronger. They want to, you know, do something new, you know. Um, these are like your, your general fitness populations, like personal training clients and things like that. Um, we have health-related reasons, and so someone just wants to feel better. And you know what? Why, you know, stick yourself in a gym and do something that you may or may not really like all that much? Um, you could engage in some sort of functional training. Um, some people want to train just for aesthetics. They just want to look better. Maybe they also want to feel better, and sometimes I feel like those go hand in hand. You, you want to feel better, but then you end up looking better, and then you want to feel better again, and you want to look better, so, you know, they go together. Um, and then also successful aging. That's a huge, huge thing in our society, um, especially as of late. You know, people want to stay fit. They want to stay healthy longer, 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 and who wouldn't? I mean, that's, that's the point of all of this. So then we go on to physiological reasons. So we have things like power and speed. Those uh, sometimes are used interchangeably. They're sometimes uh, synonymous. And so power and speed, there's some sort of time element involved. So you know, when we're talking about lifting something that's heavy, uh, that's strength. So you're, you could lift something. You could you know, take two minutes or you know, five minutes to lift something that's 100 pounds. Either way, you've lifted it up to the, you know, from the ground. And that's, that's strength. That's, you're strong if you can lift that implement from the ground. However, if you do it quickly, if you not only lift that 100-pound bar from the ground, but you do it with speed and you know, you're quick about it, that's when we're talking about power and speed. Uh, we can talk about muscular strength. Some people want to get stronger. Um, we can talk about muscular endurance. Some people want to be able to run that race and last a little bit longer. Flexibility is a key. Uh, concept in fitness. I think it uh, obviously should be the foundation, but most people don't train it. So you can get an element of flexibility with uh, different types of functional training implements. And also balance. So balance is huge, especially if we're looking at that, uh, that population, the, the elderly population, those that want to you know, age successfully. We absolutely need balance and flexibility, really, for those populations. But uh, across the board, flexibility is very important. And then we go to movement-related reasons. So uh, how many of us just, you know, we typically walk in that single file line. We never do any lateral motions. We never do anything to the side. Uh, people do lunges, you know, but they're doing it in a linear fashion. What about a side lunge, OK? So we can think outside the box and do different types of movements. And so we have rotational movements. So how many of us have uh, maybe done you know, medicine ball twist in the gym? OK, so you're getting that rotational movement. And that's really important, because our bodies don't just move in one linear fashion. Um, so we've got lateral, like I said, that side lunge. That's that lateral mo motion. Unilateral, that means that you're not just using uh, both limbs. OK, you're using one limb or one leg Okay, to kick a ball for, you know, in soccer or um, let's say you're throwing something, that's a unilateral mo uh, mo sorry, movement. Um, so all of those are very important to train, but we don't necessarily train those in the gym, right? Everything has two arms or a place for two feet, right? So we never really train that way. We have multiplanar, which means um, we, can, we can constitute this in terms of agility. So if uh, you know, you're playing, a lot of times we go out and play ultimate frisbee on Fridays when we don't have this, and so we'll spend an hour out there, we're running all over the place, and you know, that's where the agility comes into play. We're cutting, we're having to change direction, so you know, the frisbee might be going that way, and then there's an interception, you've got to run the other way, right? So that's where the multiplanar motion comes into play. And then also, 
um, in terms of movement, sometimes we just want something that's a little higher intensity. And for some of you that have been to our other talks on um, high intensity training, and you know we call it HIT training, so um, things like that are going to boost our, our metabolism. They give us a little um, you know, change in our, our workout routine. So if we're constantly on the treadmill doing long, slow distance workouts, when we throw in that interval training or the, the high intensity stuff, it makes it fun, it makes it new again. So uh, that's an, you know, a huge advantage of doing this type of training. Anyone sick yet? No? Okay, good. <laughs> so we're going to watch a couple videos of um, some trends that are out there in, in terms of you know, our quote-unquote functional training tools that uh, they market heavily. They're great tools. I use a lot of these. Actually, uh, everything except for the Viper, which is the first one I'm going to show you. So hopefully this will uh, pull up. Yay. Okay, so I'll just let you guys watch it. I'll explain it in a second. So they're basically flipping around and moving this uh, cylindrical rubber weighted device. Okay, I first saw this and I'm going, yeah, that's a joke. <laughs> but at one of the trade shows and conferences that I attended, I went to a whole demo on this piece called the Viper. And I cannot tell you, I sweat my butt off so hard doing that. And I'm thinking, I don't sweat this hard when I'm lifting weights. So it's a great tool, and it looks kind of funky, and you're thinking, okay, what's the big deal? But that thing's heavy, and it comes in different weights and different sizes and whatnot. But, I mean, if you look at them, they're doing all sorts of different motions. They're doing all sorts of different movements. I mean, they're combining a squat to a press to a lift to all sorts of different things, and you can do it anywhere, which is great. So that's sort of the, the trend that uh, functional training is going towards, is being able to do this stuff anywhere you go. You could do it in the gym, you could do it at the beach, you could do it really anywhere you want. I mean, what machines in the gym do that stuff? Makes you want to just throw around this big rubber thing, right? <laughs> yeah. So you kind of get the idea on that. Um, it's a great video, but I'm going to stop it there. Whoops. And the next one. I don't know what happened here. Sorry about that. Um, you know, they range from like 45 pounds to, um, I think the heaviest one is 95. I could be wrong, don't quote me on that. There we go. Sorry, we'll have to uh, fast forward a little bit here. See, I told you guys would be my uh, guinea pigs here. And I was having trouble with this one earlier. This one might not work. But the TRX, we have it downstairs. Um, maybe you guys have checked it out. And uh, it's the yellow straps. They've got two handles. You can do all sorts of funky, crazy things with it. It's great. It's body weight training, but um, it really will kick your butt as well. This is uh, a BOSU balance trainer. And so you guys can watch all the cool, awesome things they do with this. This stuff gets me excited. So I watch this, and I'm like, hmm, what can I do in my own workout? Look at that. Again, you can't do this on machines, right? Look at that. This doesn't look like training, right? It looks like fun. I mean, maybe to me it does. <laughs> that doesn't look like fun. And the BOSU company, they do trainings here a lot. They're crazy people. They will think of any exercise. I mean, you're like, how did you come up with that? Oh. 
Okay, so again, those are just a few of the trends right now in the, in the industry. And again, they're all absolutely great tools. But again, you should have lots of tools to use and, and not just use one thing like a machine or use cables or bands. I mean, you should be able to use all of these implements, including what I'm about to talk about. So um, when we're talking about improving performance and getting stronger, getting faster, um, and a I put an athlete, but really, I mean, we all are athletes in our own way. Um, it depends on the following equation. And so if any of you have been through physics before, uh, I went through years and years of biomechanics. And so this is like, you know, second nature for me. So power equals force times velocity. What does that mean? So um, I kind of touched on it earlier. So if, if you're lifting something and it's a heavy implement, it's a heavy weighted bar, and it takes you five minutes to lift it, again, I constituted that as strength. There's no power element involved because in order for there to be power, there has to be that time element. So you have to do that, that same movement or lift that same implement. You have to do it quickly and rapidly. And so that's where that, that limiting factor is, is the time or the velocity. Velocity, velocity is, is basically how quickly you're doing it or how fast you're going. So when we're talking about um, someone like a, a linebacker, a football guy who's you know, 225 pounds, um, we're talking about this guy who's very strong, but he's too slow for his own strength. So he's very, very strong, but do you think a 225 pound guy is, be able to run, is going to be able to run very quickly? I mean, don't get me wrong, the guys in the NFL are beasts and they can run you know, really fast 40 yard dash times. However, they're so big and so large and they're so strong that they can't really move their bodies that quickly. And then we have the opposite side of the spectrum. So we've got kids and they're too weak for their speed. So they're really, really fast. They're going all over the place. They're darting around, right? But they're not very strong. And they're, they're weak in terms of, you know, you compare it to someone who is very strong and who has that balance of, of strength and speed. And so what's the ideal? Well, you want the foundation of strength, obviously, and you need to build on that with that, having that speed. And this isn't just for the athletes. This isn't just for the general fitness. This is for um, any population. You think about someone who's elderly, and some of us have parents that are getting older, and we're worried about falls or slips and falls, right? Well, a main component of, of someone who's going to recover quickly from that um, or, or maybe catch themselves when they fall. Think about when someone falls. It's not like the slow-mo, like, oh no, I'm falling. Wait, wait a second. You know, it's, it's fast. It's really, really quick. And so if someone's able to react or move their arms or move their body position really quickly in that time frame of falling, chances are they'll catch themselves. Maybe they won't fall in such a, you know, a horrible way. So really the speed element of this is super, super important. And then, of course, strength, even as we age, is very, very important as well. So again, with physics, with this, we're talking about Newton's third law. So for every action, there's an opposite and equal reaction, right? So take, for instance, this runner, the, the very first picture. So the, the action is him pressing down forcefully, and the action is him going forward. And this is the same thing that happens when we just walk. So each time we press back with that leg and we move forward. All right, so you can look at um, this, uh, this jumper. So like a hurdler or some sort of like high jumper, they do some sort of action and then they get the reaction, which is the movement. And so when we're talking about strength and power and things like that, what we really wanna do is increase ground reaction forces. So if we can press into the ground or press against something as hard as we can, guess what? That implement or that, you know, the ground, it's pressing back on us. That's just the law, that, that's just Newton's third law. So if you can press against something as hard as you can, you're only going to be better. So let's talk a little bit about these unusual training implements and methods. And what do they all do? What's the purpose? You know, what do they look like? So the first one, uh, this is a, a parachute run or a resisted run. 
And the top picture is something that you might see that's a little unusual. You see someone running out on the field and you're like, what the heck is that? Why do they have these, you know, these things coming out of their waist? So, um, but what it is, it's causing resistance. It's causing drag. And so he's working and it's the same thing as I, for each of these unusual training implements. So we've got the parachute. I put something that you might see in a gym or a training facility or a performance center. And so this is called the power runner down at the bottom and you actually stack up weights on the back of it and then you're in a running position here so your, uh, your chest is supported and you press back so you can put a lot of weight on and really get the leg drive back or you can take the weight off make it really light and go for speed do the leg drive really really fast and so you know what we're doing in the machine here is what we can do outside with you know a simple training implement the parachute and I'm sure kids have done this before having like you know a sheet or you know an umbrella or something same thing so what it does again this type of training increases ground reaction forces which I said are very important in terms of you know increasing performance and uh, really just improving speed and power um, we, we can increase the leg drive speed so the the speed that you can uh, get your legs to move through that run also the leg drive frequency so it's not just how fast or, or your stride length that's you know how quickly and how rapidly can we do it? Lateral movement options. So you could do the same thing with that, that parachute and you could go laterally. So you could attach it to here to your waist, the parachute's out that way, and you can do side shuffles or you can do something in a lateral motion. You can mix it up. It's, it's not just for linear motion, which is great. Um, and so I would constitute this if any of us have ever run outside or even like gone for a bike ride and let's say, you're down by the back bay, which has happened to me. All of a sudden you get this huge headwind and you're like, gosh, this is really hard. All of a sudden it gets really intense and you've got resistance. That's air resistance. And so, you know, that's the same thing as attaching that parachute on. Same difference. But um, we're trying to mimic it by using an implement to do, uh, to do, sorry, to do so. Next, we've got tire flipping. So this is uh, our lovely model, John, who's in the back. Everyone can wave to him. <laughs> so actually, we had a, an anteater, a strongest anteater competition a few weekends back. And um, we had five different exercises. We had one of them was a tire flip. And they had to do it for 100 meters. And they had to do it as fast as possible. Now, these are not light. They're not super, super heavy either. I mean, there are tires out there that are like 800 pounds. This one's, I think, like 135, something, somewhere around there. Um, I haven't exactly put it on a scale, but I did do my research, so hopefully it's around that. But um, what happened is John and I naturally had to check it out and see, you know, what the pace would be during the competition. So, of course, we went out there and we were flipping tires and stuff. So uh, that's where the picture came from. But um, it's fun, obviously. I mean, he looks like he's in pain, but um, <laughs> he and I can both attest to it that we had a blast after we, you know, caught our breath. But um, if you look at this movement of the tire flip, it looks a lot like this, which you can do in a gym. Your, it's your basic deadlift, right? So what we're doing in this sense is we're, we're strengthening all of the same components. We're strengthening all of the same muscles. We're just doing it in a different setting using a different implement. And so what does it do? Sorry. So it trains triple extension at the ankle, knee, and hip. And why is this important? Well, when we want to talk about being efficient with our movements, if we want to talk about speed and power, you need all body components, you know, all of the lower limb to coordinate and synchronize with one another. So if you're still bent at the hips, but you're, you know, trying to run like this, you're not going to be very efficient or very fast or very powerful. And so the, the idea of triple extension is that you get your hip to extend, your knee extends, and your ankle extends to push you forward. And so that's really important in terms of sporting endeavors and things like that. We want to maximize that triple extension. Um, also, as I mentioned before, the ground reaction forces. Um, there's an emphasis on correct lifting posture. So the same lifting posture you use for a deadlift uh, also transfers into that lifting of the tire, flipping it. And then you can, again, you know, attribute this to when you're in your own lives and, you know, at home, you're at work, wherever. Sometimes we have to lift boxes. Maybe we're helping a friend move. Maybe we have to lift a couch. I mean, you could lift couches, I guess, if you really wanted to out on the field, but I don't know that anyone's going to do that. 
Um, if you're transporting some sort of heavy material and you have to lift it, I mean, you're, you're utilizing these same body mechanics. And so that's where these things start to become important. It's not just, oh, I do my lifting in the gym. Well, maybe you help a friend move every weekend in the, you know, the month of June. And so guess what? You've done all of your lifting that month on that one weekend. The next one, we've got a sledgehammer hit. So uh, the top one, you can't really see it, but she's hitting a tire. And so as she comes down, She's hitting the tire, and that, that force of hitting it actually throws the sledgehammer back up at you. So the only energy you're expending is that downward motion, and then it just plops it right back up for you. So it's actually kind of fun. Um, it could be a little dangerous if you're coming back <laughs> at your face, but <laughs> I've never had that happen yet, but I should knock on wood here. Um, and then you can attribute this to uh, throwing a medicine ball in the gym, okay? So slamming it down, it's that same general movement. Um, you're getting the rotation, bringing it down and slamming it. Um, and then again with the medicine ball, it's popping right back up at you as well. So similar thing that you can achieve in the gym, but outside it's just way more fun. I mean, it's like, come on, you're slamming it, you know, take out all your aggression, out all, all, take out all your stress of the week. So it's actually a lot of fun. Um, so again, you're transferring that power from the lower body, the hips, into the upper body with something like that. So um, in this sense, it's not just your hips doing all the motion. It has to transfer into the arms, into the sledgehammer. Um, you improve the muscular communication between the upper and lower body. So again, our bodies work as, as a unit. We're not just a lower body and an upper body, and then we have to figure out how to move them separately. We have to have them communicate. Uh, you have the rotational component, so it's not just a linear motion up and down. You come over, you come down, and you swing, and you hit. And it takes a lot of different movements to achieve that, that one exercise. And so, again, you can look at, you know, if you have to chop wood. Some of us, you know, might have come from the Midwest. I know my family's out there, and they have to chop wood sometimes. And I never had that, you know, option to do so. I lived in California. Um, if you're doing a house remodel and you have to do a demolition of some sort, guess what? That sledgehammer comes out and you're <laughs> hitting the walls, right? Um, also kind of fun. So, next one we've got. We've got another sort of a sled drag resisted run. Now we're, we're adding weight. So instead of wind resistance using the parachute, we're using some sort of weight or sled or something to push um, or pull. And again, this isn't exact, but this bottom picture here, this is called a jammer. And what a jammer is, is you can load plates onto it. We don't have it here, and um, it's actually not very popular, but I really like it because, again, you can do all sorts of motions. It has a, a handle here at your chest, and you can explode up into it and press it forward, and again, you're using your whole body. So it's the same concept as sitting in a, a you know, seat and you're doing a chest press, but in the jammer, you actually get your whole body into it. So what I had a lot of athletes do when I would train them is I would have them stand laterally, grab that handle, and then push up into it. And what does that look like? It looks like a shot put or some sort of throw or some sort of, you know, you could even do a rotational movement. So um, it's really versatile in terms of what you can do with not only the jammer, but something like a sled. You can do lateral motions with that as well. You could attach it on. You can do the side shuffle like I mentioned with the parachute. So lots of options with it. Again, same type of thing. Increases those ground reaction forces, um, trains the triple extension. You can do rotational, lateral, linear movements with it. And then, you know, some of us have had to pull a cart full of heavy materials. I know, you know, there are some, you know, kids in my neighborhood, and I don't know where they got it, but they have one of those red flyer wagons, and I thought they stopped making those, like, a long time ago. But they have one, and they pull each other around in it. And I'm thinking, those kids are smart. They're getting strong. They're pulling each other around, and, you know, they're having fun, so, but they're actually exercising and getting fit. So, of course, my mind always goes to, oh, they're exercising. <laughs> and here we've got sandbags, so some sort of sandbag carry or sandbag lift. And um, this is actually kind of a, a unique tool as well. The Viper, which I showed you earlier, that cil cylindrical tool that, you know, you can do all sorts of, you know, crazy things with. You can actually do a lot of the same things with a sandbag. Sometimes they have grips on them or handles. Sometimes they don't. So you just have to sort of, you know, get down and get it up however you can. But um, it trains a lot of different things. Just trying to physically get something up off the ground that's really, you know, unusual to pick up or, or difficult to, to manage actually trains core. It's a lot of strength that goes into it. And also, um, I'm kind of going ahead of myself here. I'll uh, go. 
right to my slide here, but grip strength. Grip strength is actually really important, and a lot of us don't think of it, we don't train for it, but um, you know, you're only as strong as, as your weakest link, and for a lot of people, that's grip strength. So they can't hold on to something, even though they might physically be muscularly strong enough to do so, their grip just goes, and it, it goes the fir that's the first thing to go. Um, so again, with that sandbag, you can do runs with it, you can do rotational drills, all sorts of multiplanar motion is available with the sandbag. Um, and you know, again, you can attribute it to lifting actual sandbags. So let's say we've you know, got a flood coming, you need to lift those sandbags up and out of your truck. So this right there, you're getting that you know, unusual training implement uh, in your workout. Bags of soil, so I like gardening, and so those bags of soil are, are like 50 pounds, right, in some cases. So taking it in and out of the car, to and from you know, the store. And then I know a lot of us do this. Well, I know I do. Um, but I try and get every single grocery bag that I can and then run in the house. Okay, same type of thing. I'm not kidding. So, <laughs> I know everyone's done it. <laughs> you don't want to make five trips, right? You just want to make that one. So, and then you get to the door and you're like, ah. <laughs> grip strength right there. <laughs> All right, so the last one and the craziest thing that I used to think of was the car pushing, but it's actually really fun. Um, so again, you're you know, doing the same motion as this guy here who's doing the Olympic weightlifting, and he's got it overhead. You're still overhead with a car push. You're still using your whole body. You're you know, synchronizing everything that's going on at one time. And what does it do? <clears throat> again, ground reaction forces. You're improving those, increasing those, triple extension. And you know what? Let's just say that you know, all of us have been there, done that. We had to at some point push some sort of heavy equipment or something heavy and we had to get it done. So it does come in useful or it comes in handy and it's pretty useful. So when we're talking about, oh, I have one more for us. Um, we've got ropes, battling ropes is what these are called. And um, you can do alternating motions with these. You can do double motions with the ropes. Um, it's primarily an upper body movement, but as uh, some people will attest to that have actually used these ropes, you're thinking like, okay, it's just a rope, you just swing it around, no, no big deal, right? But 15 seconds of this will completely gas you, I guarantee it. I don't care who you are, how fit you are, you will be dead. <laughs> so doing a circuit with ropes, even harder. Um, I have people that are like, oh yeah, I can do it for 30 seconds, and I'm like, okay, go ahead, try, I wanna see it. And sure enough, 15 seconds into it, they're like, you know, really struggling, but you can tell they're, they're determined to get the 30 seconds. I'm like, not gonna happen. So they're very, very difficult, and you wouldn't think they would be, but they are. Um, and so again, what this looks like is, uh, you know, if any of you have hopped on a rower, it's not exactly the same motion, but you're training a lot of the same musculature. So with a row, you get the upper back, you get the traps, the lats, um, the arms come into play, but you also have to stabilize. So I don't, even though she's sitting, she still has to keep her abs tight. Um, she ha still has to use her legs on the rowing machine to, to push. And so believe it or not, one of the things that makes the rope so difficult is you think you're just using your arms, but you're actually digging into the ground really, really hard with your legs so you don't fly forward. And so I, uh, I challenge any of you, anytime you're in here, you know, maybe after the lecture on a Friday, we've got ropes in the wellness lab downstairs, just try them out. I, you will not make a fool of yourself, you can't, it's just, you know, all you do is this, okay? But dig your butt in, you know, get down into it, and go, and see if you can last that 15 seconds. It's actually kind of fun. Um, if you like pain. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> um, but again, you're using all of these things have in, or what all of these things have in common is, again, you're using your whole body. And it's not just a bicep curl. It's not just a leg extension. You know, you're not just singling out muscular systems because guess what? When we're walking, we're running, we're moving, we're using our whole entire body. And so um, what, uh, what the ropes have, again, we're transferring that power from the hips into the upper body. Again, we're communicating with those systems, and we get a lot of muscular and core strength from this. And so even though you're just you know, swinging around a rope, you're getting stronger as you're going. Um, you also have unilateral options with this because uh, you don't have to just do both arms. You could do one arm, or you can do you know, one arm switch to the other. I mean, there's so many different possibilities that you can do. And I mean, this isn't a true to life example, but I mean, a lot of us have done tug-of-war before, right? I mean, 
many of us have. And uh, usually it's some sort of competition at work or whatever. But um, you know that comes in handy. That strength, that that ability to to move a rope and things like that. You're gonna win in tug of war. Guarantee it. <laughs> all right. So what I want to ask all of you to do is after this, I want you to start rethinking your workouts. And so what do you do that is that works? What do you do that doesn't work? What do you do that maybe um, you don't necessarily like it, but you know that you should do it because either your doctor told you to or you know something that we told you to do that's very, very important and you know you should be doing it, but maybe you just don't like it. So you're like, uh, I, don't, I don't really enjoy it, but you know I do it because I want to stay fit. So start rethinking what you can do in your own workout. Maybe you have a big, heavy tire at home and you're like, you get home tonight and you're like, hmm, <laughs> maybe I should go flip this around in the front yard. Um, feel free. <laughs> People might look at you like you're crazy, but you know what? You're going to be having a lot of fun. So <laughs> one of the things I want you to look into in your own workout is what planes of motion are you moving in? So if most of you come to the gym and you do a leg press, okay, that's a linear motion. Then you go on to a chest press, that's another linear motion. And then next you do some sort of row or lat pull down. Again, that's a linear motion. Okay, so you're starting to think like, wow, I'm doing a lot of linear motions. Uh, let's say you do a bicep curl. Again, linear motion, right? So you want to start to switch it up. I'm hoping that you do because linear is kind of boring, okay? So think outside of the box. So if you're doing walking lunges, why not do a lateral lunge or a side lunge? So switch it up. If you normally do um, you know, some sort of uh, medicine ball ab workout and you're throwing it to a friend back and forth, try turning to the side, kneeling down, throwing it to the side, okay? Catch, come back down, throw off to the side. So um, there are a lot of things that you can do to switch up your own workout and try and think of all of these different lines of motion. So we've got the sagittal plane, which um, when we're looking at movement, what, is that, what does that mean? It means a linear motion. Like I talked, most of our exercises, most of our movements are in that linear plane of motion. Um, we've got, within this plane, we've got forward and backward mo motion, and that's it. In the frontal plane, we've got lateral movement, okay? So we're going side to side. And again, some of us do that, maybe not as much as we could or should. Um, and then we've got transverse. And so what this does, um, for example, you've got your transverse abdominus, which goes around your belly, right? And what this does is it stabilizes. And so if you're doing some sort of rotational movement, there's a, an exercise called the man maker. I don't know why it's called that. But essentially, you're on the ground and you're in a plank position and you're holding dumbbells. So as you pull, your one arm and two legs are still in contact with the ground, but you're lifting one arm up. And so naturally your body wants to do this or it wants to cave in. And so what you need to do and where that transverse uh, abdominus comes into play or that rotational movement is you actually have to stabilize your body, lift that arm up, not move one way or the other, and then set that arm back down and repeat with the other. And so what that does is it really fires up that core strength. And so um, when we're talking about the rotational movement, the sledgehammer hits and the medicine balls and you know, things like that, um, that's also an important movement too because what ends up happening is people do some sort of lifting maneuver at work or at home and they go to lift a box and they don't move their knees and they just do this, okay, your back goes out or you get injured or something happens. Well, if you're used to doing some sort of rotational movement, that, that propensity for injury is a lot less. So why, other than the fact that I said that they're fun, and you may or may not believe me, why should you do these or engage in these unusual training implements? Well, um, it's challenging, so some of us like a challenge. We don't want to do a workout that's super easy because, you know, that gets boring. Um, you, you just don't feel like you're challenged enough. So, you know, something like this definitely will. Um, there's unpredictability within the workout. So it's not just your cut and dry, you know, you're going through the motions at the gym. It's fun, it's engaging. Uh, you're doing something you've never done before maybe. And so that makes it exciting. Um, you work on the weak links of the body. So let's say again, like I said, the grip strength is usually the weakest link. So you can definitely train the grip strength with all of these implements. Um, and then also a big thing is that flexibility or lack thereof actually really stands out when you start doing these things. So you might be able to cheat and fake it in the gym and go like, oh yeah, my hamstring you know, flexibility is great. 
But uh, when you start doing this stuff, your form deteriorates rap really, really rapidly, actually. Um, and you start seeing where people are weak or where they're not flexible. And you can sort of attack that at another time. So those things start to really stand out, which is important. Um, improve speed, of course. You know, if you're powerful, you're, more, you're quicker, you're faster. And then also training energy systems. So you've got the ATP system. You've got glycolysis. And so training these different metabolic systems actually uh, creates a higher caloric burn. And you get to really, really get you know, a lot of basically bigger bang for your buck, which I talk about in a second. But you also synchronize the musculature systems, which is really important in terms of uh, your whole body moving and, and getting it to, to communicate with one another. So what sets your gym workout apart from tire flipping? So, and aside from the fact that it might be boring. <laughs> so, oh, whoops, went a little too fast there. So flipping tires or swinging a sledgehammer requires little to no eccentric motion. Eccentric motion causes muscle soreness. Now, I know a lot of us think the harder we work, the, the more sore we are, it means the better we're going to be or you know, the better workout we had because we're really, really sore and we can barely sit down on the toilet, right? <laughs> Not always the case. Um, so when, oops, sorry. So when we're talking about eccentric motion, what does that mean? I'll give you a comparison. So when we're talking about the traditional deadlift, which I talked about earlier, we have the upward motion, which is what we call the concentric motion. It means that all of the muscles are contracting. They're requiring some sort of lift, okay? So we're moving that implement up off the ground, and all of the muscles are tightening, they're contracting. Now, what happens when we get to the top? We just don't drop it, right? We have to come back down to the ground. So that downward motion that we all hate because it's really, really hard to do under control, and a lot of us just want to slam down to the ground, that's called the eccentric motion, and it requires a lot of force, and you actually are, are not only combating the forces of the weight going down to the ground, but you also are fighting gravity going down. So um, when we bring that, that weight or barbell down to the ground nice and slow, your muscle is still contracting, but it's trying really hard to, to stretch and lengthen so you can go back down to the ground. So what ends up happening, the muscle fibers tear a little bit, you know, and, and when I say tear, it's not like you're being injured, but that's what the muscles do. And you need that in order for growth, but you also want a lot of concentric motion for strength gains as well. So um, when we're talking about the tire flipping, there's the, Upward motion, whoops, I forgot to change that font, sorry. So we've got the upward motion, which is still concentric, okay? We're still contracting the whole entire body to flip that tire, but that downward motion, there's no eccentric portion because guess what? Instead of having to lower that tire down to the ground nice and slow, it just falls. So you don't even have to worry about the eccentric portion of it. So guess what? You don't get sore or you don't get as sore. And so for anyone going through a workout that doesn't really like getting sore that much, they're like, oh, this is looking really good, you know? So what does that mean? And again, I already kind of talked about this, but um, you incorporate the whole body at the same time, which is great. Um, it means that you're, you're utilizing your muscular system as they should be and one cohesive unit. Um, but again, it results in that higher caloric burn, bigger bang for your buck. Who wouldn't want to do that, right? It's fun, you get more bang for your buck, and you might look like a crazy person out there flipping tires and hitting the tire with a sledgehammer, but um, you know, step outside of your comfort zone and do something different. Try it out, and you might you know, decide that you really, really like it. So, and you might come to our art cross fitness class and you know, get your butt kicked by me. So, <laughs> Anyway, folks, that's all I've got. So thank you, thank you, thank you for attending, and we'll see you next week.